You may have heard about CityWorks Expo. For years now, we've been bringing people together to share big ideas for better places. Expo connects innovators across the community and around the globe through an ongoing series of events, conferences, and social media. And our goal is to inspire and support people like you, the ones who have a passion for making their neighborhoods, communities, and cities better places to live, work, and play. Check us out at cityworksxpo.com to learn more. Become a part of the Expo community and share your story. You never know who you will inspire with your big ideas. Thank you, Ed. It's, uh, it's a real honor to be part of Expo this year. So um, my name is Jamie Smith, and I'm an assistant, research, assistant professor at the Virginia Tech Carilion Research Institute and Medical School right here in Roanoke, as well as the Department of Biological Sciences in uh, Virginia Tech in Blacksburg. The research in my lab is focused on heart disease. And my name is Samuel Amoui. I'm a research assistant professor at the Virginia Tech Carilion Research Institute here in Roanoke. And I'm also head of discovery at a biotech company, First String Research. And my um, uh, research focus is on cancer. All right, so you may have picked up on a couple of accents there. Um, and that's actually because I'm originally from Ireland, um, and Sammy's actually from France. Um, we're going to be talking to you today about communication on many, many different levels. But first of all, let's communicate with each other a little bit. So who can say this word right here? Hello. Hello. OK. All right. How about this one here? Hello. Very good. OK, now some Gaelic. Who can say those words? <laughs> I heard it. Yes, very good. OK, so we've actually communicated yeah. in three different languages. Um, and you may be wondering why there's an Irishman and a Frenchman standing on the stage of Expo this year. Um, and it's actually because of a common passion that we share, which took us to Roanoke. And that passion is actually in uh, basic medical research. Now, the scientific career is a pretty challenging one, but it's also extremely rewarding. Um, and that takes me back to early in my training. I remember I was sitting at a microscope with one of my previous mentors, Clodagh O'Shea, who's now a professor in the Salk Institute in San Diego. Um, and I was looking at a microscope, and my experiment worked. So I saw something new. I saw something. I understood some biology. And I was excited, and I was writing my data down. And Cloda turned to me and said, Jamie, stop. You need to understand the fact that you are the only person in the world right now who knows this. And that moment was one of the most humbling and impactful moments of my career, which actually cemented my path as a research scientist. So of course, as academic scientists, it is really important to publish these kind of big discoveries. But it's also very critical to be able to take those discoveries out of printed paper and to move them forward um, to, toward therapies, toward the clinic, toward the patients. And this road is not always an easy one, but today we're going to tell you uh, why we believe that Roanoke has all the components uh, for us to achieve this dream of moving forward basic research into the clinic. Uh, but before we do so, we wanted to give you a little bit of background on ourselves. Um, um, so let's take some step back and tell you more about the path uh, that brought us from Europe to, uh, to the US. I just noticed those maps are actually to scale. Yeah, I, I like that. Fr France, France is, is really big. Good. All right. So um, this is Europe. And France is right here. And I was born and raised in this little city called Annemasse. It's about 30,000 people. And it's just uh, in the heart of the French Alps, uh, just next to the border with Switzerland, uh, very close to Italy. And this is the kind of view um, I had growing up. So yeah, not bad. Um, High, very high, high mountains everywhere, um, uh, just all around. This is actually uh, the Mont Blanc. Um, this is the highest mountain in Europe. It's about 16,000 feet high. Um, so yeah, great place to grow up, beautiful um, um, surrounding. It's really a place where, um, of course, with all the mountain around, um, when you're a taller, uh, you know how to walk, then your parents just push you on the slopes and voila, you know how to ski. It's that easy. So, um, uh, but anyway, um, I uh, went to college uh, not too far, one hour and a half drive uh, from where I grew up. I mean, France is 
small country. Um, and, um, and I got my PhD in cell and molecular biology in uh, 2004. And following, following that, I decided to um, undertake my postdoctoral training in the US. Um, and so in 2004, I left uh, family, friends, and I came to uh, San Francisco. Um, I um, undertook my postdoctoral training at University of California in San Francisco. All right, so meanwhile, a little further north, um, I was growing up on a small seaside town called Greystones, just south of Dublin on the east coast of Ireland. And no Alps for me, this is the view outside my window most days <laughs> uh, with, the, with the weather that we're pretty similar to the weather we're having here right now, unfortunately. Uh, but seriously, Ireland is actually, of course, a very beautiful country and I'm very proud to come from there. Um, and I actually did my PhD in uh, Trinity College, Dublin, also in cell biology. Um, and I was awarded that in 2005. And I also then headed over to the University of California, San Francisco, to start my postdoc training there. And so um, uh, as postdoc, as we call that in San Francisco, um, we, we had great, amazing training. Uh, we actually uh, worked together. Uh, we collaborated together. Uh, we had complementary skills that we could put together. And so we also published uh, papers together on, on uh, the field of heart disease uh, and cancer. And I think this is also at that time where I realized um, the potential of having this data and that we can uh, move uh, toward the clinic and to, toward therapies. So I wanted to explore that a little bit more. Um, and so in 2012, after my postdoctoral training, I um, uh, joined a startup company, a uh, biotech company in San Francisco. Uh, as principal scientist to, to explore a little bit more uh, on the industry um, uh, side. All right, yeah, and so when, while well, Sami had kind of moved out of the academic path uh, to this really exciting startup community that exists in San Francisco in the Bay Area, I maintained this path of, of, of the academic uh, research track. Um, and it was actually when I got to the point where I was ready to start my own lab, and I begin my job search uh, internationally, but mainly in America, uh, to get my own research, independent research group, that Roanoke actually appeared on the horizon for both Sammy and I. And that's because of the Virginia Tech Carilion School of Medicine and Research Institute, where we both now work. When, when, looking at this um, as a young scientist, um, it really had all the assets that I was looking for that would ensure my success as an independent scientist starting my new lab. Um, we have the medical school in collaboration with Carilion Clinic, providing not only the access to Carilion Clinic and important clinical data, but also these medical students who are interested in research um, to work in the labs. The research institute itself is world class. The facilities we have are absolutely breathtaking, and it is an absolute joy to work there. And my colleagues um, are really also some of the top scientists that you could meet. And that's not even mentioning Virginia Tech itself and what that brings to the table in order for this great, great uh, collaboration and communication between these different entities to make this happen. And so, San Francisco, of course, is a great city. Um, it's beautiful. It taught us a lot. It's a city known for big ideas, entrepreneur, lots of biotech. Um, so, so that is great. But at the end of the day, you get a little bit sick of being in line for everything. You are in line in your car, stuck in traffic jam. You're in line to get to your favorite restaurants. Um, and it's almost like you are in a virtual line uh, to move your career forward. There is a lot of biotech, a lot of saturation, and it, it's kind of hard to, uh, to, to move forward uh, as fast as you want. Um, and so I really saw the opportunity to come here as well um, um, in Roanoke and, and work at the VTCRI. I saw. Um, the resources as well with Virginia Tech um, to, to, uh, to keep doing what I like, uh, which is between being between um, academia and industry. Right. Um, and I think the size of Roanoke really helps us to achieve those goals. Now, you've got two scientists on the stage, which means that we're, we're, we really need to talk about science. Um, we love what we do. Um, sorry that we're going to do this, but it, hopefully you're going to see why we're so excited about what we do and what's going on in the Virginia Tech Carilion Research Institute down the road um, and why it's important that we keep this kind of thing going for the community. So I mentioned I work on heart disease. Now, keeping the theme of communication with our presentation, um, we're going to go deep with communication and nowhere is the communication more important than in the heart at the molecular level. Now, 
unlike the muscles in the rest of your body, your heart muscle is different in that it is made up of billions of individual muscle cells. So all these billions of little muscle cells are contracting at the same time, and they need to contract at the same time, in order for every heartbeat to occur. And they do so by communicating with each other. Now, <clears throat> pretty much every form of heart disease, which is the leading form of death, the leading cause of death in the United States, pretty much every form of disease involves a breakdown or change in that communication. And my lab is trying to understand how these cells regulate that communication, and if we can get sick hearts communicating again properly. Now, when we look at cells from the heart under a microscope, this is what we see. So these are three cells. I'm going to just outline them. That's one cell there, guy in the middle, and another heart cell there. And then what's really beautiful is if we play the movie, they beat. Okay, so these are cells out of the heart in a dish, and each little cell is able to beat on its own. What's even more important to me as an academic scientist is seeing the reaction of high school students, PhD students, postdocs, my friends, kids, whoever, that come into the lab to see that for the first time and be humbled and inspired by just the beauty of biology. Now, the other thing that's important about this video is not just that these cells are beating and that's cool, but also that they're beating at the same time, okay? And they're beating at the same time because they're communicating with each other. And so basically what happens is that where the cells are touching, they build little junctions and little channels that electrically connect them. So this cell can tell this cell, I'm going to beat now. And they beat together. The name of the protein or molecule that we study here is called connexin. And that's, that's my life, connexin. So my whole lab works on how, we, how these cells put connexin where it's supposed to go. Believe it or not, we have some of the most powerful microscopes in the world, frankly, down the road in the Virginia Tech Carillion Research Institute, providing world-class resources for us to really identify new therapies um, in getting cells talking together again. Thank you. So uh, how about communication in cancer? Uh, well, it's pretty similar. Uh, Jamie was telling you that if you have a loss of communication in the heart, that can be uh, bad. Well, in cancer, if you have a lack of communication, it can be also bad. So here what I'm showing is a movie with uh, cancer cells in culture. And uh, when cancer cells lose their communication between each other, when they lose um, uh, their junctions, they become more independent. And by becoming more independent, they are more mobile, uh, they move faster, and um, at the end, they, they can spread. And uh, that's what you can see here. And, and this is bad because in your body, um, if, um, if you have, um, um, when, when tumor um, um, is in your body and if a cancer cell decide I'm going to escape now the tumor um, and, and lose my communication with the other cells, then uh, uh, those cancer cells can spread through your body and form metastasis. So um, actually, the, the focus of my research here at VTC uh, and with the company First Ring Research is on uh, brain cancer. And um, I collaborate with two professors at VTCRI, Dr. Ji Sheng and Dr. Rob Gordy. And um, what is remarkable is that the very same protein, the very same molecule connexin that Jamie just talked about uh, in the heart is the very same molecule that we found being playing, uh, playing an important role uh, in brain cancer. Um, and so uh, with Dr. Gordy and Dr. Uh, Sheng, we, um, um, we developed a, a new drug, actually, that can target connexin, get, that can modulate the function of this molecule um, and, and, and uh, slow down the progression of brain cancer. Um, so um, I'm happy to share with you that um, actually we, we want to develop this new drug into the clinic and we just got an award from uh, the NIH. Um, it's it's um, a grant called SBIR, Small Business Innovation Research Grant, um, and that's going to really help us to, uh, to develop this new drug uh, into therapy. So when you look at this diagram, um, I would be really here in the middle, 
um, um, I hope we convince you that um, funding, uh, uh, finding, sorry, uh, discovery in academia uh, uh, should be uh, developed into biotechnology, um, uh, into the clinic. And talking about the clinic, this is the third very important component of um, uh, the clinic, and we are actually collaborating with uh, Carillion Clinic uh, here in Roanoke. We are collaborating with neurosurgeon. Uh, we can have access to patient samples uh, under their consent uh, when they um, uh, get biopsies of their cancer. And we can then take those cells, those patients' cells in the lab, and, st and, and, st and study them and, and see what's exactly wrong there for that specific patient. And I think this is, this is where the field of cancer research is moving into personal, personalized medicine. Um, it's, we need to keep in mind that um, there are therapies out there for cancer. Uh, there is no cure. And the reason is that we are not dealing with only one disease. It's uh, thousands of diseases. So we really hope with those personalized uh, medicine, studying the cells of of one specific patient, and then understanding, OK, this treatment uh, might be efficient for these patients, uh, but maybe this other treatment might not be efficient. So I think that uh, basically the fact that what I like about this presentation is we're talking about communication, and we're talking about how the cells in your heart need to communicate. We're talking about how cancer cells can disrupt their communication and move forward. But we're also talking bigger picture about how these entities need to communicate with each other. Um, in order to move basic science into the, into the, the hands of the doctor in, in the clinic and affect patients' lives. Um, our vision, I think, is validated in Roanoke by the fact that NIH did award SAMI with that grant in such a competitive time, meaning that everything was in place for this to happen. Now, when we began our academic careers, uh, for me, I, I, I wasn't told about all the amazing paths you could have in science. I thought it was PhD, postdoc, professor if you're lucky, maybe biotech, and then going to San Francisco, um, Sami had the exposure to this really dynamic startup community that was really exciting for us to experience. Um, and that's why when we look at Roanoke and we see all those components there, we believe that it can really be an important city for medical research. We, wanna, we have ideas, we work with the Roanoke Blacksburg Technology Council, the Virginia Tech Corporate Research Center, VTIP, um, there's just so many people, including those involved in Expo here, who just make this place incredibly stimulating to live in and work in and just exchange ideas and help each other move things forward. Um, as I mentioned, we only had this one path in our head during my PhD, but I'm really proud to say that at the Virginia Tech Carillion Research Institute, we have a graduate PhD program that's just in its second year called Translational, Translational Biology, Medicine and Health. Um, and the importance of this program to me is that it's providing the graduate students not just with this basic science training, but every possible, a really broad grounding for every possible career they could be interested in, from basic research to implementation to policy to affecting the community. And I think that is a really great advantage for those students to have, and I'm happy to be there. Um, it is, uh, <clears throat> and so basically with that, I think. Yeah, I can, I can just share like a, one more story. Um, 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 oh, yeah. So, it's, it, it was uh, heartbreaking to, of course, leave San Francisco. We, we moved um, uh, last year. Uh, it's exactly one year that we are here now. So, we, uh, we moved um, in July 2014. And um, it was scary. I mean, you leave a city that you know uh, for 10 years. You leave your friends. Um, it, it was quite emotional as well. Uh, we actually did a road trip. Uh, we drove all the way from San Francisco to Roanoke, and that was fun. Um, why not? Um, to, to discover more about... stuck in Vegas about, for a few days. Yeah, Vegas <laughs> was a stop, of course. Um, but um, it, it's a weird feeling when you leave the city and you know that you are going only one way toward the east, and it's not, um, it's not a round trip. It's just like a one-way trip. Um, so we actually couldn't talk to each other in the car for like the two first hours after we uh, passed the Bay Bridge. Um, uh, but then after that, it was all fun, of course. Um, we arrive in Roanoke, and it's, it, it is scary. You don't know many people. It's overwhelming. It's a new city. Um, I think we are all good to, uh, to adapt ourselves, so we are not too worried. But the, the, the great thing that happened is that uh, our realtor, who is now a friend, Kelly Dalton, was a sponsor for um, uh, Expo City Walks last, last year. And she had extra tickets, and she gave me one. 
saying Sami that will be very helpful for you um, to, uh, to, uh, to to go uh, to Expo. So I was I was in the audience. I was sitting there and. I got so amazed by all the great talks that were so inspirational, and it was exactly the right moment for me to hear all that, uh, being in a new city and not knowing uh, what would happen. And I remember telling Jamie, um, um, well, you know, we're going to be fine here. We, we're going to do something. And I, I told him also, um, you know, We'll, we'll do great, and then um, one day, uh, maybe, we, we will present at Expo. Uh, <laughs> I would not expect that that would happen so fast after one year only, but it's just probably the best example to tell you um, how things can move uh, forward faster when, when you are in a city uh, like Roanoke. So uh, thank you so much, Ed and Amy, for the opportunity. Uh, as we say in French, merci. I don't know how okay. to say that. And then more Gaelic, uh, Gurv Margots. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay.